All right, let's jump right in. Thailand is a neo-colonial gulag of the United States and Western capital generally. So I came to this conclusion after reading uh, a couple of books by a Kenyan writer named Ngugiwa Thiongo. His book is uh, A Writer's Prison Diary. And the other one is Decolonizing the Mind. And uh, he wrote uh, The Writer's Prison Diary on toilet paper after he was incarcerated by Kenyatta, who Malcolm X said was a good guy and said we need to name our children after people like that. Put this guy, Ngugi Watiango, in prison for a couple of years. And so uh, uh, Ngugi Watiango was nominated for a Nobel Prize twice. He didn't win, but he's been nominated. He's a very excellent writer, and his books are gripping. They're some of the best, most incredible books I've read, contemporary books I've read ever. Okay, so uh, what uh, Thiongo said in uh, Writer's Prison Diary, he described the situation in Kenya uh, under British rule in the 1950s. And what he described was almost exactly word for word what goes on in Thailand with regards to expatriate Westerners living there and uh, things like the sex industry, go-go bars, uh, and all that kind of thing. Exactly, identically the same. It was shocking to me when I read it. Okay, so uh, if you can follow what he's saying, Thailand is almost identical to the situation in Kenya prior to the liberation from British rule. Okay, and uh, I imagine if you go to Thailand right now, you can find a lot of British people who are doing the same thing that they were doing in Kenya in the 1950s. Okay, so there's one uh, there's one aspect. Now, the other, uh, the other book I read that pertains to this is John Perkins' uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. He, uh, as well as uh, a couple of sequels that he wrote to that book. Uh, the way it works is this. Uh, these uh, Western companies go to Thailand uh, to take advantage of the cheap labor uh, as well as the terrorist dictatorship that keeps a gun to the head of every worker in the country. So if they try to organize... Uh, they'll be met with uh, uh, violence, intimidation, and uh, if they are organized like the workers at the Ford plant who went on strike last week, uh, they will be ordered to a military camp to, uh, to get uh, their thinking put straight. Okay, so it's a, re so it's a real like, like uh, terrorist regime. Uh, and uh, the Western companies that are over there, for example, uh, Yum, Ford, Pirelli, Dow, uh, LG, uh, as well as uh, some uh, a lot of computer companies, uh, they will not say anything at all about the, the coup d'etat. They have no interest in it. They, it. They're no interest in democracy, no interest in the Western and the benefits of the Western system, how that might help the uh, the workforce in Thailand. They just have no interest. All they want is cheap, terrorized labor that they can exploit to the hilt in order to make immediate profits. And uh, they, they are um, enabled uh, by the U.S. ambassador, who won't say anything, just does uh, photo ops with these incredibly reactionary uh, right-wing ties. And uh, the um, also uh, enabled by the dictatorship, who just keeps a gun to the head of the population and has no qualms about, like in tw uh, 2010, just gunning down dozens of up to 100 people in the street. And I mean, I'm talking... Uh, unarmed civilians, students, a uh, nurse was, ki was killed, assassinated in a, in a temple. Okay, so uh, they, uh, 
who do these people work for? I mean, the dictatorship. They certainly uh, don't work for for people in Konkan, who they just uh, this the governor in in Konkan was uh, he claimed that the population is stupid and they need to get their thinking straight. Okay, so uh, the dictatorship also has canceled all elections in Thailand. That is uh, all local elections, all provincial elections, all national elections canceled out. Every single city governor, every single provincial governor, and uh, every single national government official is appointed by the military. Top to bottom. They're all appointed by the military. There is not a single election. They're making noise about election now, but I guarantee you, if they if they don't put a leash on the military or they don't even mention reform or abolishment of the monarchy, there it's not going to do any good. They'll stay in power like Ying Luck for about two or three years until somebody in the military gets a... a a stick up their butt and decides to just start blowing people away in the street and then we'll do it all over again. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, talk more generally about the United States. Uh, so uh, what's the deal with the United States in Thailand? In uh, right after, in, in the early 1950s, right after this uh, King Bummy Bowl uh, shot his brother in the head and assumed the, the throne of Thailand, uh, what happened was the CIA went into northern Thailand, which is occupied Isan, which is which is occupied Laos, uh, which Thailand claimed in a war in 1827. Okay, so uh, up there, uh, there was these people who were wanting to join the Communist Party. They were communist organizers. And so the CIA set, d ran a, an entire... American taxpayer-funded uh, public relations campaign on behalf of uh, the monarchy, and uh, they they dropped leaflets. And the the main thrust of the leaflets was, uh, if you're a if you're a patriotic Thai, you will support the monarchy. You will uh, you'll support Buddhism, and you'll support the country. So it was like monarchy, religion, country. Same exact line that you hear today goes. It comes from the CIA. So yeah, so like all all of my students who are out there uh, every day uh, doing a why to the king, the Buddha, and the country, you're doing exactly what the CIA wants you to do. So there. You